moving on to example problem number three, using mental math. So we're now going to apply some of these properties we've learned about multiplying binomials, in specific uh, squaring binomials, in order to learn a method for mental math that might make a lot of problems easier for you, particularly large squaring problems. Uh, at the top it says using mental math, you can square a binomial to find the square of a number. The question says, what is 39 squared? Use mental math. Uh, you can see that the problem is written out in front of you because uh, it kind of shows you what should be taking place inside your head um, as we go. So this should make sense. One thing, possibly the smartest thing we can do, is to approximate what 39 squared should be, either before we begin or after, possibly both. Uh, 39 squared, just think 39 is really close to 40, and 40 squared, well, 4 times 4 is 16. 40 times 40, so we're going to have to add two zeros. 16 plus two zeros, 1,000, let's see what color I have, 1,600. So a reasonable answer is going to be near to 1,600. Doing quick checks of how reasonable our solution is will be a really good way to help us uh, avoid making simple mistakes, such as a decimal point in the wrong place, a negative sign, uh, a, a positive value that should be negative, or vice versa. Um, so quick checks to see if your answer is reasonable, a really smart idea. So we're going to get an answer close to 1,600. And here's one way we can do this. 39 squared can be rewritten as 40 minus 1 squared, and now it's written as a binomial, and we can apply properties that we've learned about squaring binomials. Uh, we find that 40 minus 1 squared will equal 40 squared, right, the square of our first term, plus, and we'll get to that minus sign in just a moment, plus 2 times our terms multiplied, so 2 times the product of our terms, since one of our terms is negative, this will result in a minus 2 times 40 times 1, plus our second term squared, and our second term is negative 1, uh, but negative 1 times negative 1 will become positive 1, so plus 1 squared. Um, simplifying, we will find 1600 minus 80 plus 1, um, 1600 minus 80, fairly straightforward mental math, and then adding 1, possibly or probably even easier mental math for most, 1,521. And here's your opportunity to show that you have got it. What is 85 squared? Use mental math. So a quick reminder, rewrite in your mind 85 as being some binomial. Now 90 minus 5 would be appropriate. I'd probably prefer 80 plus 5 in my head. Fewer chances for mistakes, uh, both terms being positive, uh, and then set to work using these properties you know. If you try and are unable to complete this using mental math, you're welcome to use paper, but try to remember the steps that you've learned that can help you use mental math to solve problems like this more quickly. And part B. Is there more than one way to find 85 squared using mental math? Explain your reasoning. A key concept, the product of a sum and difference. The product of the sum and difference of the same two terms is the difference of their squares. So what does that mean? Take a look at this algebra example. In the case of a plus b times a minus b, well, that will equal a squared, note that's the first term, times the first term, or the first term squared, minus the second term squared. Here's a more concrete example. x plus 2 times x minus 2. So take note, our first term in each of these binomials is x. Our second term is 2. And that's important for this difference of squares to work. Um, we must have the same terms just that one will be a sum, one binomial will be a sum, and the other binomial will be a difference. So that will equal the first term squared, x squared, minus the second term squared. And again, it looks like there's a mistake here. These twos should be superscript. They should be exponents. 
that's all right. We understand x squared minus 2 squared, and that is x squared minus 4. Very good, and a nice shortcut for us. A quick check at why it works with an area model. Well, a plus b and a minus b, note the green and red to represent positive and negative respectively. When we multiply those, um, the key thing to notice is that there is a green rectangle with area AB and a red rectangle with area AB. Recall that green represents positive area or positive values. Red represents negative. And so those two are what we would call a zero pair. When added together, they equal zero. And that just leaves us with A squared and B squared. And we know that B squared should be subtracted from A squared by virtue of one of our second terms. So b times minus b would be negative b squared. Example problem number four, finding the product of a sum and difference. So here we're multiplying a sum and difference. The question is, what is a simpler form of x cubed plus 8 times x cubed minus 8? Now, this will result in a difference of squares, like we began discussing in the last example. Uh, I like the way this has lined out the steps for us. What we should think on the left-hand side and what we should write on the right-hand side. So this will kind of explain the, the algorithmic problem solving, the process that we use as we solve a problem like this. So first, write the original product. Some of you may call this rewriting the problem um, on your page. Identify which terms correspond to A and B which I've referred to as the first and the second term in the rule for the product of a sum and difference. So this just means consider this rule that we've now learned. Um, and in this case, a will equal x cubed, b will equal 8. Substitute for a and b in the rule x cubed plus 8 times x cubed minus 8 will equal x cubed squared Recall that will be our first term squared minus our second term squared. And noting properties of exponents, x cubed squared, a power to a power, we multiply the exponents to find x to the sixth minus 8 squared is 64. And another opportunity to show that you have got it, question one of three for this section of got it questions. What is a simpler form of x plus 9 times x minus 9? Work carefully and make your selection from the choices below. And got it, question number two. What is a simpler form of six plus m squared times six minus m squared? I'll work carefully and make your selection from the choices below. And question three. What is a simpler form of three c minus four times three c plus four? Work carefully and make your selection from the choices below. Problem number five shows us another opportunity to utilize our properties of multiplying binomials. Um, in this case, difference of squares to help us do mental math. Uh, it's really a neat trick uh, that can save you a lot of time when it works. And the next time you're hanging out with your friends and you're asked a problem like this, um, what's 64 times 56? That comes up in conversation quite often, I found. Uh, you can impress all your friends with your powers of mental math, all because of these properties. Um, I'm sure you'll look forward to that. So the question is, what is 64 times 56? One thing to note is that 64 is exactly 4 units above 60, and 56 is exactly 4 units below 60. And that's key in ensuring that this will work. It would also work with uh, 63 times 57, or 21 times 19, or 26 times 24, 27 times 23. There's always this common central value that's a whole number or an integer. So let's take a look at how this works, and that should begin to make more sense. So we rewrite 64 as 60 plus 4, and rewrite 56 as 60 minus 4. All right, so you probably notice what's going on here is we've set up two binomials, and our result is going to be a difference of squares. Uh, with some practice, you can get really good at this and, and truly save yourself some time on problems, um, multiplication problems like this. 
So the square of our first term is 60. And then we will subtract the square of our second term, 4, 4 squared. 3,600 minus 16, a subtraction problem we can do in our heads to find 3,584. And once again, impress your friends. So let's practice. Here's your chance to show you have got it and that you are prepared to impress your friends the next time a problem like this comes up in conversation. What is 52 times 48? Use mental math. Work carefully. Make your selection from the choices below. And once again, if you're unable to do this mentally, you're welcome to do some of the steps on paper. Try to do as few as possible. The more practice you get with these, the more likely you'll be able to use them in real life to make math easier. And finally, your lesson check exercises. Remember, you may screenshot these. You may do work from this page, pausing the video, um, or screenshot and print if you'd like to do the work from paper, or ignore that this even exists on the video and simply log into your digital textbook and do your work that way. The next slide, problems three and four from your lesson check. Pause now if you would like. And finally, the do you understand section of your lesson check, problems five, six, seven, and eight. Good luck, work hard, ask questions if you have them.